branch to Bodmin General and Wade Bridge. This passenger service, seen here in the summer of 1959, would survive until January 1967. Bodmin General was a terminus, and here Small Prairie Tank 4559 runs round for the onward journey to Wade Bridge. From Bodmin General, the line continued to Boscan Junction on the old Bodmin and Wadebridge Railway, a very early line dating back as far as 1834. Approaching Wadebridge, we join the Southern's North Cornwall line with some vintage motive power on display. O2 tank 30199 is on a local to Bodmin North. Four double five nine now runs round again, ready to return to Bodmin General and Bodmin Road. The largest engines to appear at Wadebridge were the Bullied Light Pacifics. 34032 Camelford is very suitably named for North Cornwall Line services. The Adams T9 class 440s, nicknamed Greyhounds, were highly popular machines with both engine men and enthusiasts. And here in 1959, half a dozen were still at work on the southern so-called withered arm. On the left, an old London and North Western 12-wheeled saloon served at Weybridge for many years as a loco men's staff room. A BT well tank of 1874 vintage eclipses even a greyhound, 25 years its junior. The last T9 went late in 1961, and after that, Weybridge never seemed quite the same. One of the BT tanks comes in from the Wentford Bridge branch with a load of China clay, a commodity which kept the branch in business until 1983, although latterly it reversed at Boscan Junction and went out through Bodmin Road instead of coming to Wadebridge. Since the branch closed, the Bodmin end has been reopened as the private Bodmin and Wentford Railway, with serious attempts being made to attract Wentford China clay back to rail. Three 1874 BT tanks, first planned for withdrawal back in 1900, kept going until 1962, when replacements were at last found that could take the notorious Wentford line curves. The 1366 class outside cylinder panniers from the Great Western. Back on the main line now to Lost Withiel. Junction for the branch to Foy, which closed to passengers on the first weekend of 1965. Here, in 1959, Foy Station is still in business as a China clay train approached from Lost Withiel. Another branch to Foy, which ran from St. Blasey, lost its passenger trains back in 1929, but remained open for clay until 1968. is 280 tank number 4294, one of just two of a type, nearly 200 strong, that were shedded in Cornwall especially for this traffic. The great majority of these heavy goods tanks spent all their lives in South Wales. Foy docks are actually at Carn Point, a mile up river from the town proper. The branch from the branch from Lost With Eel opened to this point as a mineral line in 1869 and was only extended into the town when passenger services began 26 years later. Since the passenger trains fell foul of Dr. Beeching's axe, the branch has reverted to its original length and purpose. The branch train leaves for Lost With Eel, a typical GW formation of small prairie tank with a two coach push and pull set. The other branch to Foy, from St. Blasey, is now a private road used by English China clays. One of the West Country's best known heritage lines is the West Somerset, which has taken over the former Taunton to Minehead branch, which it operates between the Seaside Resort and Bishop's Lydyard.
Minehead has a spacious station, designed for the long through trains that once brought in holidaymakers by the thousand from London and the Midlands. There was even a slip coach from the Cornish Riviera Express, attached to the branch service at Taunton. British Rail closed the line in 1971, after a long and bitter struggle. But it reopened, privately, as the West Somerset Railway, five years later. Anchor, a sign advertises the Railway Museum, opened in 1985 as part of the Great Western 150th anniversary celebrations. The traditional level crossing gates of this station are now very much a rarity. Small Prairie Tank 5541 is yet another ex barry machine, withdrawn in 1962, rescued ten years later, and first restored to steam in 1975. Heading the other way comes BR Standard Mogul 76079, built as recently as 1957 and withdrawn just 10 years later. The loco was rescued from Barry in 1974. Resting the summit of the 1 in 65 Washford Bank is 4277 again, on a demonstration milk train, two six-wheeled tank wagons and a passenger brake. Until the 1970s, services like this ran every afternoon on branches throughout the west to be marshalled into mainline block trains for London. This may be just a demonstration train, but recently the West Somerset has in fact handled revenue earning freight in the form of rock to build up the eroded sea wall at Minehead. Leaving Watchet for Minehead is Great Western 460-7820 Dinmore Manor. Rescued from Barry in 1979, 14 years after withdrawal. Pannier Tank 6412. Unlike most of the engines seen today, it was purchased direct from BR after withdrawal and went first to the Dart Valley Railway in South Devon. Foxcote Manor and King Edward I joined forces to lift a busy steam gala weekend service on its way towards Minehead. This view of twin pannier tanks on the cliff top near Watchet is a famous photographic viewpoint, and it's not hard to see why.
a splendid sight here as Dinmore Manor and 76079 double head an 11 coach train westward from Willerton. Willerton Station is the halfway point on the line and the chief crossing. <laughs> Resident pannier tank 6412 works hard at the same spot to lift its seven coaches up the gradient. Traffic 460 Kinlet Hall does an excellent impression of a through holiday train from the Midlands as it winds through the glorious Quantock countryside. The whole railway is exceptionally well presented, with immaculately manicured permanent way, which twists and turns through rolling countryside in a most agreeable fashion. Stogumba has the sleepy atmosphere of a rural station deep in great western country. You can almost smell the wooden floorboards and the disinfectant in the waiting shelter. Notices have the genteel politeness of a bygone age. 4277 completes the scene perfectly.